You can think of this as a continuation of my discussion in glycolysis because the last thing I said there is that pyruvate is expected to undergo many other steps in cell respiration to give us our ATP. This discussion will not actually lead us to the end product, which is the actual ATP molecules, but this is a significant step towards it. Especially if you have heard of the terms aerobic and anaerobic, we will set the distinction between those two here. Now, just as a recap, remember that in order to get pyruvate, we must fulfill the 10 steps of glycolysis, such that a molecule of glucose will eventually become, well, just to be specific, two molecules of pyruvate. And this happens in the cytosol, as you can see here, so you can imagine. All of the space you are looking at here is the cytosol. Although I do have a divider here wherein uh, they actually have something here that occurs in the mitochondrion. Now, our cell will always have, specifically the cytoplasm, will always have some redox state in it, wherein there's some kind of level of oxidation and reduction. And more importantly, we assume that there should be some amount of oxygen there. Now, depending on whether there is a lot or there is a few, we would actually have the so-called aerobic or anaerobic states. And as you can see, depending on whether we have a lot or a little oxygen in the environment, we would be going to different paths. So, if we have a lot of oxygen in the environment, we will have to undergo the aerobic respiration um, destination, wherein we could assume that the first thing we do is imagine pyruvate, which is originally in the cytosol, travels to the inside of the mitochondrion. And inside the mitochondrion, we have the enzyme called pyruvate dehydrogenase, oftentimes abbreviated as PDH, converting pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. Behind this process is actually a lot of detail. For example, what? You may remember in our discussion of glycolysis that pyruvate is a three-carbon compound. Now, Going back to our basics of organic chemistry, an acetyl group is CHCCO, right? If you count the carbons here, there are only two carbons. So, one worthwhile question to ask here is, what happened to that one carbon lost from T3 to become 2? And the answer to that is, while it is not obvious in the name of the enzyme, there is actually a decarboxylation step here. In other words, there was a release of carbon dioxide along the way. And this accounts for that one carbon that was lost. So, 3 minus 1 equals 2. Okay? And this carbon dioxide is part of the carbon dioxide that is expelled from the cell. For example, in us humans, part of the carbon dioxide we exhale. Right? Now, another uh, important thing is that we might remember that Dehydrogenation means oxidation, right? And just like what I was saying in glycolysis, if we have an oxidation step, there must be an accompanying reduction. And in this case, we have to have a partner molecule. In this case, you might find this uh, familiar already. We actually have a molecule of NAD being reduced or getting a hydrogen such that we have a product here, NADH. And we know this is significant because NADH can be converted to ATP later on. Now, just to be accurate with the numbers, don't forget that we have to multiply everything here by 2. Okay, so far so good. And um, this is actually not the end of the story for aerobic respiration because there's still a continuation for acetyl-CoA, namely the very popular Krebs cycle. Of course, this is worth... Uh, 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 another recording. So uh, this has to, to wait until the future. But going back to this question, what if we are in the anaerobic state or there is deficiency of oxygen in the cellular environment? What will happen is, of course, what we call anaerobic respiration okay, or otherwise known as fermentation. Although, uh, of course, uh, fermentation is something... Uh, very commonly used, even by laymen, uh, even outside the realm of science. Fermentation in biochemistry refers to anaerobic processes. And 
fermentation differs uh, depending on the organism and we will be dealing with the case of humans in the case of microorganisms as well as yeast okay for us humans pyruvate if it is inside a cell which is said to be in the anaerobic state will not actually go to the mitochondrion for whatever reason it will stay in the cytosol and will instead be converted by a different enzyme named lactate dehydrogenase giving rise to lactate or what we call lactic acid now you have to know that lactate is a three carbon compound so if pyruvate has three and lactate has three there was no carbon lost here now what is intriguing about this one is that the name lactate dehydrogenase is named after the product maybe so far you may ask uh, what's the problem with that and maybe that's because I have never mentioned something about it yet and if you think about it normally when we have an enzyme that ends in dehydrogenase it is named after the substrate or the reactant for example we had GAP before, right? This is GAP. And then the name of the enzyme here is GAP dehydrogenase. So it's named after the substrate as well as this one. Pyruvate dehydrogenase is named after pyruvate. So we know that pyruvate is oxidized and so it must be accompanied by a reduction process. So what's wrong with this name? Here, we are being, you know, kind of given the suggestion that if you want to follow the name lactate dehydrogenase or LDH, it's actually lactate, which is dehydrogenated or oxidized. So, if you are really to follow the name of this one, it should have been something like this. Lactate is dehydrogenated or oxidized to pyruvate, and as a partner reaction, a molecule of NAD must be reduced to NADH. However, since here in lactate fermentation or in anaerobic respiration leading to lactate, what we see is the opposite wherein we have pyruvate being converted to lactate. That should also mean that the partner reaction should be reversed. Thus, instead of NAD becoming NADH, we should see here that NADH becomes NAD. That is big because here, if you produce NAD, or in other words, you consume NADH, this is actually opportunity lost. This could be ATP, but sorry, we can't do that because to create lactate, you must sacrifice this. And this will be very costly when we compute the ATP molecules later. So we also have to remember that we have to multiply everything here by 2 just to be accurate with the computations in the future. Now, of course, as uh, some of us would know, Lactate often builds up in the muscles. That is because it is our myocytes or muscle cells which have the greatest tendency to reach the anaerobic state. Remember, our muscles expend a lot of energy pretty much every time we walk or, or we work out. But for example, um, the reason why people produce excessive amounts of lactate is because they uh, do too much exercise, probably more than they could handle. Their muscles lose all of their oxygen because the activity was way too intense. And then that's what actually forces the muscles to shift to the anaerobic state. And this is big because some people uh, would have too much lactate accumulating in their muscles, which would contribute to their cramps. And of course, a, a worthwhile question to ask alongside that is, uh, how do we get rid of the lactate since we know that this lactic acid could contribute to the muscle cramps? That is a question that we will reserve for later. I mean, a different video at that. But So this is like a hanging question. But, uh, well, technically speaking, if you consider the process of fermentation, once you produce lactate, it's already over. There's no more continuation for this. The only option you could do is to convert lactate back to pyruvate, which is an entirely different story altogether. Now, for yeast or other microorganisms, they have a different set of enzymes. And instead of LDH, we, they have an enzyme called pyruvate decarboxylase. As the name implies, pyruvate decarboxylase will remove a carboxyl group, nothing more, nothing less, which is uh, removed as COO minus. So that's actually just carbon dioxide, if you come to think of it. And uh, our product is acetaldehyde. Which should, once again, make sense because pyruvate contains three carbons. The prefix acid means it's an acetyl group, and we've already mentioned a while ago that 
uh, a set of groups are just two power bonds. So 3 minus 1 equals 2. Now, acetaldehyde can be further converted to ethanol using the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase, which again, of course, F is a prefix that means two carbons. So here, uh, the carbon uh, count is concerned, uh, conserved. Alcohol dehydrogenase, as you can see or think about it, is once again named after the product. Very much lactate dehydrogenase. So we can use the same analogy here that if we really want to follow the name alcohol dehydrogenase, we should imagine that the alcohol is the one oxidized or dehydrogenated to the aldehyde and the NAD becomes NADH. But since we are doing the opposite, acetaldehyde to ethanol in this scenario, we also have to reverse this, such, just, such that just like a while ago, NADH will have to become NAD. So I have to note that down. The reason why I'm saying this and this is that uh, some of you may actually uh, intend to just memorize this and this. And for people who are not that careful in reviewing, you might think that what happens in aerobic is exactly the same as anaerobic, when in fact it's, they are actually opposites of each other. So hopefully this would uh, uh, give you some kind of clarity uh, so you would not be confused with these two uh, concepts or these two phenomena. Now also, don't forget, we have to multiply everything here by 2 just to be accurate with the uh, details. I actually forgot to put 2 here, so yeah. So one last note, Okay, we're actually done with the three common fates for pyruvate. This is something that will help us explain the commercial use of yeast. For example, some of you may uh, be familiar that yeast can be used for alcoholic beverage production, because if you do force yeast to produce or to undergo anaerobic um, respiration, they will produce ethanol for you. Also, one of the reasons that we call it uh, baker's yeast is we could use it for uh, making the dough rise. Uh, and right when you when you uh, put yeast in it and mix it and then you leave it behind after uh, returning, waiting for a few hours, it it be becomes bigger. And hopefully it would make the, the bread softer. And the reason why it got big is that there were gas molecules being produced by yeast making the dough bigger than before. That gas is actually the carbon dioxide released after the decarboxidation process. So uh, maybe some of you who do actually bake uh, would find that uh, interesting or nifty as a trivia. But yeah, uh, other than knowing that anaerobic respiration gives us lactate for lactate fermentation and ethanol for ethanol fermentation, uh, at least by sharing you some other details, you would know that these things are uh, not without merit in real-life situations.